Olympics entered the year 2022, many were pessimistic about the country's economic prospects. Official institution and economists forecasted modest growth, with some surveys predicting a growth rate of around 6 to 6.5 percent. However, these predictions were quickly surpassed as the Philippine Statistics Authority officially announced a growth rate of over 7.6 percent, a figure not seen in over four decades. So, what led to this spectacular growth in the face of inflation, interest rate hikes, a surge in the US dollar, and other issues? There were a variety of growth drivers in the play throughout the year. One of the biggest factors was a wave of revenge spending in the early months of the year, which continued until the end of the year. Many local economists point to this as the primary driver of the country's growth. The wholesale and retail trade industry was one of the largest contributors to this growth, posting an 8.7% increase. But it's important to note that revenge spending wasn't the only factor at play. The fastest growing industries for the full year were manufacturing, which posted a 5% gain, and construction, which saw a spectacular growth of 12.7%. Some economists also point to election spending as a major contributor to the country's growth in the early months of the year. However, it's difficult to quantify exactly how much of an impact this spending had on the overall growth rate. Another important factor in the Philippines' growth was the country's high employment rate, which pushed up consumption despite inflation. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, the unemployment rate dropped drastically from 6.4% at the beginning of the year to less than 4.2% by November, the lowest rate since 2005. The National Economic Development Authority chief attributed this drop in unemployment to workers finding more remunerative and stable work in private establishments, as well as an increase in full-time employment. While services were a strong contributor to the country's growth, there were also sectors that didn't fare as well. The agriculture, fisheries, and forest industry, for example, saw a decline of 0.3% in the fourth quarter. Economists have noted that 2022 was a difficult year for the agribusiness sector due to an increase in natural disasters. The government has continued to support consumer and affected sectors through the extension of reduced tariffs on various products, facilities, and an accessible supply chain, among other measures, to cushion the impact of inflation on households. But of all of this consistent growth, we must still never forget that along the way, we have seen robust growth in an already strong sector, such as the business process outsourcing industry, which posted a record-breaking $29 billion in revenue, contributing massively to over 1.43 million employees. These were kept in touch and stayed afloat even despite international issues, simply because there were calls to push more for work at home. Hence, eradicating the need to have an in-office workplace, and more outsourcing. Secondly, we must also praise the strong overseas Filipino remittances, which is estimated to still account for 9.5% of the country's GDP. Why does this matter in 2022? Well, the Philippines has had a deficit in its current account. A current account deficit simply means that the Philippines has been importing more goods, services, and capital than it exports. Without the remittances of about 38 billion US dollars, it is likely that the remittances has helped alleviate the worries about the International Reserve for the Philippines. For further context, the Philippines had declining international reserves in 2022. As of the latest data, it fell to just 96 billion US dollars from around $110 billion just a few months ago. Eradicating, say, the $38 billion received would hamper the foreign reserves and pose the economy at a bigger risk. Despite this robust growth, there are concerns about the coming year. The country's central bank may need to tighten policy faster in the first half of 2023, which could have an impact on capital formation and GDP growth. Some official institutions have forecasted growth between 4 to 5 percent, while the government continues to target 6 to 7 percent. However, there is also optimism for 2023, as energy prices are dropping and the Philippines, being a big energy importer, will likely benefit from this. Some financial groups, like First Metro, are expecting the Philippines to continue its economic strength in 2023, citing no deep slowdown in consumer spending and optimism in infrastructure investment spending, and capital goods, even accelerating by 2023. 
The relaxation for further foreign investment policies is also expected to contribute to a big foreign investment inflow. In conclusion, the Philippines' growth in 2022 was driven by a variety of factors, including revenge spending, election spending, high employment, and a strong performance in industries such as retail, manufacturing, and construction. While there are concerns about the coming year, there's also reasons for optimism as energy prices are dropping and foreign investment policies are expected to contribute to a big foreign investment inflow. Only time will tell if the Philippines continue to exceed expectations in 2023. But anyway, let us know what you think 